Hello back everybody. I didn't know that there is a time limit with those videos uh, and we just run I, I believe over an hour uh, the last one so we got cut off. So this is continuation of of the previous uh, video which, uh, which which was titled or it, it is titled structure and functions of joints and muscles. Okay, so uh, we uh, stopped on Golgi tendon organs and muscle spindles. So let's go to the next slide. Energy sources for the muscles, anaerobic metabolism, chemi uh, chemical energy from ATP stored in skeletal muscles, and aerobic metabolism, chemical uh, energy from stored carbohydrates, fats, proteins stored in body. Okay, let's talk about uh, those uh, shortly over here. So anaerobic the ones which are utilizing the ATP or stored energy in your cells uh, are anaerobic because no oxygen is needed the energy is already there readily available to uh, quickly release from the cells uh, this is good because we can do abrupt sudden movements uh, we can sprint run but only for short period of time after a, a couple of minutes uh, though this ATP the stored energy is depleted uh, so so um, then you need uh, the uh, aerobic metabolism which occurs in your body is a chemical energy coming from your stored uh, carbohydrates, fats, and ultimately proteins. But in order to utilize those uh, stored chemicals, you need oxygen because this is a burning process. There is no fire without oxygen. There is no burning without oxygen. So you must have oxygen or introduce chemically oxygen to those stored uh, foods because that's what it is. Um, in order to to produce energy that's why we eat we eat carbohydrates we eat fats we eat proteins uh, to have that in our body and that's why we breathe to introduce the oxygen to those foods so either without food or without oxygen we would suffer ultimately die Be uh, solely because muscle would not have energy to work okay so let's go to the next slide attachments of muscles um, so the muscles uh, can attach in any given way really uh, directly through the bone um, or indirectly through the bone directly to the bone it's through the through through the specialty like a uh, f um, fleshy fibers then indirectly of course through tendons tendon of the muscle is the non-working unit of the muscle it's like a, a rubber band which is uh, part of the muscle but is attached to the belly the working unit of the muscle aponeurosis is a broad, uh, broad flat thin of the that connective tissue and you can find uh, this at, um, aponeurosis in different parts of the body you can find it uh, here in your forearm between the bones and you can you can find um, in, in other places of the body as well and of course ligaments <coughs> ligaments are part of the capsule we talk about those already capsule is attached to the bone through the ligaments and the muscle can act actually be attached directly to the ligaments or even directly to the skin as our facial muscle that's why you have so um, much uh, pliability of your face because of those muscles which are at attached directly to the skin and you can do um, all kind of things with your face all kind of grimaces and um, and stuff okay so let's go to the next slide uh, angle between the line of pull of a muscle and the mechanical axis of the bony lever we're going to talk about those levers uh, later in the le later lecture uh, more extensively this is just kind of like a heads up so mechanical axis run from the center of one joint to the center of another joint. It's mechanical axis of rotation for any bone. So uh, let me stand up over here maybe like this. So this is, my, of course, my, my arm. 
so from here to here right so this is humerus from humeral humer humeral head to the end of the humerus right here that's what that's what we're gonna call mechanical axis angle of pull is constantly changing but let's me go let me go to the next slide so I can explain this a little bit better what, what does this even mean okay so <clears throat> this is a picture from your book angle of pull of muscle ever-changing uh, uh, movement of the uh, moment arm why do we call it moment arm moment because it's momentarily changes as you move and you can clearly see on this picture you can observe an elbow the muscle is elongated the uh, the forearm is down or is uh, uh, is uh, extended and you can see the distance between the center of elbow to the muscle tendon is very short however when you bring your your forearm up to 90 degrees which you can see in the picture b you can see that that moment arm is is significantly longer so the angle of pull is the angle between the mechanical axis of rotation of the bone which we just discussed and the point when the muscle tendon attaches to the bone okay so and the, and it's called moment because constantly changes as we move without mo without changing the moment arm no movement occurs okay let's go to the next slide so uh, attachments of course uh, of the muscles we have origin and insertions uh, origins of the muscles are usually least movable usually proximal attachment usually attached to the heavy segments and br and they are broader attachment because origins of the muscles are like an anchor right they they anchoring and the distal part is the one which actually is responsible for the movement so the insertion or the distal part of the muscle is movable uh, it's always distant as I just mentioned attached to the lighter segment because you want to pull lighter towards heavier not the other way around and they are usually smaller attachments okay let's go to the next slide uh, we have again two different type of muscles we get tonic muscles and we have phasic muscles let's talk about tonic muscles first uh, constructed for stability therefore logically they're gonna be called stabilizers so tonic muscles are stabilizers uh, usually non-parallel they're gonna be uni bi or multi penate and we talk about that why because penate muscle is stronger per square inch right fibers usually short and wide uni arthrodial what that what does this mean it crosses only one joint remember what i said before in the previous lecture that the more joint the muscle needs to cross the weaker the muscle is since this is a stabilizing muscle cannot afford to be weaker therefore it's uh, uni uh, usually um, uni arthrodial or crosses only one joint okay uh, medially located and makes sense because laterally located muscles would be more responsible for movement the ones closer to the center the midline of your body would be responsible for your stability they lie deep um, attached near to the joint they cross so they are deep rather short muscles and predominant of red fibers why red because we need endurance and not speed right we we familiar with red and white fibers already okay let's go to phasic muscles phasic muscles um, constructed to produce movement naturally we're gonna call them mobilizers they are usually parallel so uh, so longitudinal we call it fusiform right so the fibers they're gonna be long and narrow they're, go they're gonna be multi-arthrodial in other words they're gonna cross more than one joint uh, not always but in a lot of cases 
Uh, of course, they're gonna be situated laterally. They're gonna be more superficial. Those are the muscles you can clearly see under your skin. Uh, usually attached farther from joint being crossed. Uh, and predominantly with white fibers because again we need speed we need um, uh, more speed than stability because otherwise we wouldn't be able to move all right let's go to the next slide terminology we all familiar with that this is just simple reminder agonist antagonist of course agonist is the muscle which is uh, directly responsible for the uh, for the movement uh, you want to occur uh, and uh, antagonist is the, the, the muscle which opposes this movement. And the relationship is very, very tight and very, very important. Uh, one really cannot work well without the other. But we will uh, talk about that le in later lectures as well. So this is kind of like a heads up only. Okay, let's go to the next slide. We have also muscles called our synergist, sy synergist muscles. Okay, muscle which contracts at the same time as the agonist. For example, how many muscles do we have which contract elbow? Three. So uh, all three muscles are working pretty much at the same time. The primary muscle would be a biceps. Why? Because it's large and it's predominantly working with elbow flexion. But we can't forget about brachialis and brachioradialis because those are other two which work together as a team. So the teamwork is going to be called synergy or synergistic muscles. Okay? Assistant movers, assist primary mover, neutralizes, neutralize unwanted movement, stabilizer, stabilize movement, creating smooth motion. All of those small muscles uh, around the joint are kicking in for one purpose and uh, uh, to, to help the primary movers, but to also stabilize uh, the movement and making that movement smooth so you don't jerk your muscles, so you don't jerk your extremities uh, so so there are so usually or most of the time whatever you doing whatever you doing you almost never use one muscle but rather group of muscles which uh, which work together as one big nice family we're gonna call it synergy and synergistic muscles force couple is a very specific kind of synergy let's go to the next slide i think i have a picture yes force couple is also synergy but what's different well in the simple synergy all the muscles are working together as a team and they pull in approximately the same direction not necessarily have to be identical direction but but if they go this way if they go from right to left they all go to right to left they can, they can vary a little bit, the angle can vary a little bit, but generally speaking, they're going to go as a team. For a couple, they work as a team, they work as a, so they are synergistic muscles, but very specific. One muscle does the opposite to the other group of muscles or the other muscle, but they are responsible for one movement. So in this case, we have the anterior tilt of the pelvis anterior tilt of the pelvis so what can you observe on on this powerpoint you got erector spinae erector spinae is a umbrella name for many many muscles actually on your on your back but uh the list is long and the names are very complicated so we can just remember erector spinae as an umbrella name for many muscles back muscles uh and Erector spinae muscles are going to pull up, as you can see um, by observing this red arrow. And you can see the iliopsoas and the rectus femoris are the muscles which are going to pull towards the ground, towards your feet. But together, as a synergy, as, as a working one unit, all of those muscles are going to create one movement, anterior tilt of the pelvis in this case. 
So you can clearly see that force coupled is an example of synergy, but it's a different type of synergy. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Primary mover, we of course talked about that already, muscle directly responsible for given joint action, assistant movers also capable of movement directly but of less importance. An emergency muscle, muscle which help prime movers and assistant movers only under emergency conditions. And you probably heard those stories like I did, that a uh, pregnant woman uh, or a woman who was protecting a, ch a child lift a car. Um, I had a video, I saw the movie, it was a documentary, uh, about uh, two guys climbing uh, the Rocky Mountains and, and a huge boulder uh, dislodged itself uh, and, and fell off one of those guys. And the guy, uh, the boulder weighed like, you know, ton or ton and a half. But he caught that boulder with his arms, not to smash his face, and all the muscles in his body started to work as one unit. So he was able to, he was laying down on the, on the edge of, uh, of one of those, um, uh, you know, mountains, let's say. And he was able to actually slide that boulder above him and throw that border uh, right behind him when the border went down uh, so so it was incredible incredible strength normally would crush him in normal circumstances and would crush him there's no way that one man can can lift or or you know move his hands holding a ton or ton and a half of a rack but so he was able to do it because literally the, all the emergency muscles kicked in all his focus and every single fiber of muscle in his body worked to save his life and he broke his bones uh, actually few of them if i remember correctly from the movie but he was able to save his life so it's absolutely incredible so i do believe that this is the last slide yes it is so uh, thank you, and I will see you soon. Bye.